What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are going over the Hoyt RX-7 versus the Hoyt VTM. Both of these bows are excellent bows. Both of them are flagship lineup. This is the aluminum bow, this is the carbon bow. We're gonna go over today the exact differences between the two. I've gotten a lot of questions on Instagram from people asking if you could only choose one, either the VTM or the RX-7, which one would you choose and why? What are the differences? Well, there's a few differences that are pretty obvious and a few differences that are not so obvious. I wanna go over those differences in today's video so that you guys can be educated on the differences between these two bows if you're headed into your local pro shop to buy a new Hoyt. All right, so first things first, I have written down all of the specs from both bows and put it here on this whiteboard. So we're gonna go over each specification and compare the aluminum VTM and the Carbon RX-7. So first things first, neither of these bows are the Ultra. They are both the shorter axle to axle model. So the RX-7 is a 30 inch axle to axle, while the VTM is a 31 inch axle to axle. It's actually 30 and 5 eighths inch, but it rounds up to 31, so it gets a 31 inch badge. All right, let's go over the engine of these bows, which is the cam system. Now, some people may already know this, some people may not, but the RX-7 and the VTM share the exact same cam system, which is the Hoyt HBX Pro Cam. So being that they share the exact same cam system, that means that they're gonna share the exact same string and cable system. Slightly different lengths because the bows are slightly different axle to axle, but the basic function of the cams, the cables, and the string are all gonna be identical between the VTM and the RX-7. Now here's something that's gonna be pretty obvious between these two bows, but the RX-7 is a carbon riser. The VTM is an aluminum riser. So there are some advantages and disadvantages to both risers. With the carbon riser, supposedly it is quite a bit more robust. In fact, Hoyt claims seven times the strength integrity of aluminum. So if you're going with a carbon riser, this is going to be an extremely durable bow. Not that the aluminum isn't, because I have never had a problem with an aluminum bow, but I will say I've put my carbons through quite a bit of abuse. In fact, one of my carbon bows, not this one in particular, but I had a carbon bow fall off the top of my car at 50 mile an hour on the highway. I'd set the bow up there and I was loading the back seat with camouflage and gear, getting ready to go hunt. Made it to the highway and what do you know it? The bow flies off the back, I hear it hit the trunk, and I see it tumble on the highway. Other than a few scratches on the cam and it really beat up my sidebar, other than that, it was in pretty good shape and I took it back home and I shot the bow at 50 yards. Nothing was wrong with it whatsoever. No structural damage at all. So I can attest to the carbon bows being extremely durable. Another difference between the aluminum and the carbon is gonna be weight. The carbon bow is gonna weigh 3.9 pounds. Now that's 3.9 pounds bare bow with no accessories on it whatsoever. The VTM is gonna weigh 4.6 pounds. So you've got a little bit of a difference there. If you wanna start with a lighter platform, the carbon might be the way to go. If you don't care about it being light and you're gonna add a bunch of weight to your bow anyway, the aluminum is not a bad choice. Now when it comes to brace height on these bows, the brace height on the VTM is going to be six inches exactly while the brace height on the RX-7 is going to be six and a quarter inches. Both of these bows come with the option of getting draw weights between 30 and 80 pounds, as well as both bows having the option of 25 to 30 inches in draw length. Now, if you want something a little bit longer in draw length, say you're a 31, 32, you might look into the Ultra series of either of these bows or look into the Double XL series from Hoyt. As far as the grips go, both of these bows are gonna have the Hoyt Vital Point Grip. The Vital Point Grip is new for this series of bow and uh, I've been absolutely loving it, so no difference there. Another difference with the carbon versus aluminum risers is that the carbon is going to be warm to the touch in cold weather. So if you're sitting for long periods of time in the tree stand, in the box blind, whatever it may be, spot and stock, this riser will never feel ice cold. It'll always be warm to the touch. Whereas the aluminum bow, this thing gets cold. If you've ever held an aluminum bow in the dead of the winter, 
you know what I'm talking about. So if you do a lot of hunting in the winter and you care about the comfortability and feel of the bow, the Carbon is definitely the one to choose for that. Now both of these bows have the option of a Pictini mount on your sight. The RX-7, I do have a dovetail with a side mount on it, but it does have the Pictini option as you can see on the front there. This is how the Pictini mount works with a black gold dual track. Just bolts right on to the front of the riser. Now another difference when setting up your bow, particularly the rest, if you are running a cable driven drop away rest, your string for the cable driven rest will go around the riser on the RX-7, whereas the cable for your drop away rest on the VTM will go through the riser. Nice little feature there on the VTM. Another big difference between the RX-7 and the VTM obviously is just the way they look. The aesthetics themselves look quite a bit different. The RX-7 has a sleek, almost Ferrari-like riser, whereas the VTM has more of an aggressive, like 68 Camaro muscle car look. That's my opinion. I love the look of both of these bows, but if I had to give the cake to one or the other, I would probably go with the Ferrari. Now all your stabilizer mounts are gonna be exactly the same. You'll have an upper, a lower, and a back bar mount. My VTM, I have my stabilizer mounted in the lower position, whereas my RX-7, I have the stabilizer mounted in the upper position. Both bows, I have the back bar mounted right there, the back bar mounted right there. They both utilize the exact same Hoyt sidebar mount that mounts in that location right there. Now when it comes down to which bow is gonna be quieter or shoot better, it is really, really, really hard to tell the difference in sound between these two bows. They're both extremely quiet. If I had to give the upper hand in sound, which it's not gonna be much, I would probably say the VTM is slightly quieter. But if you're shooting the exact same weight arrow out of both of these bows, it's going to be very hard to tell. The sound out of a bow can be dampened by shooting a heavier arrow, while if you shoot a lighter arrow, the bow is going to make a little bit more noise. When it comes to hand vibration after the shot, I don't see really a whole lot of difference between these two bows. In the past, the carbon riser typically had more hand shock than the aluminum riser. But anymore, these bows are so dang refined and Hoyt has had so many years engineering the carbon platform that anymore, you're really not gonna notice too much hand shock difference between the carbon and the aluminum. Both are excellent shooting bows. As far as the limbs go, you're pretty much gonna have the exact same limb with different decals. The RX-7 will have the carbon RX-7 and Hoyt logos, while the VTM will have the VTM31 Hoyt logos. Now let's talk about the actual price difference between these two bows. Remember when I'm talking about the price that these are the absolute flagship bows from one of the best bow manufacturers in the world. So you're gonna be paying a premium price for both the VTM and the RX-7. Now Hoyt has a lot of different bows to offer below this price range, but this is the actual price range for the VTM and the RX-7. So the VTM comes in at $1,299, depending on where you look and where you shop. I've seen them as low as $1,200 all the way up to $1,350. So make sure you do some shopping, do your research, and buy it from a reputable dealer. Now the price for the Carbon RX-7. The Carbon RX-7 is gonna come in right around $1,750. Now if you do some price shopping and look around at different dealers or maybe find one used, you can do a little bit better price than that on this bow. But as it sits brand new off the shelf, typically you're gonna find it for $1,750. So what do you think, the VTM or the RX-7? Is the Carbon lighter weight warm to the touch, slightly better brace height, worth the upgrade in dollar amount, or are you gonna stick with the aluminum Hoyt VTM? Which, like I say, in terms of looks, I feel like this is the 68 Camaro and this is the Ferrari. I don't know, like I say, I love them both, but I feel like the looks of the RX-7 just slightly outweighs the VTM. Both great bows. I don't know, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. If you had to choose, would you choose the VTM 
or the RX-7. All right, here we go. We're gonna shoot both these bows side by side right here at 20 yards. I don't know if I mentioned it before, but both of these bows speed rating is right at 342 feet per second. So both bows are going to be identical in terms of IBO rating. All right, now we've got the RX-7. All right, I'm gonna actually shoot these bows both one after the other. So I'm gonna take one shot with the VTM, set it down, take one shot with the RX-7. Both bows are going to have a 450 grain Easton Axis five millimeter ran through it. It's got 50 grains of brass up front, 100 grain point, four fletch on the back end with just a standard x knock. Now also, mind you that I am running a road shotgun mic, a professional road shotgun mic. So the sound of the bow is gonna be louder than it actually is in person, just because that shotgun mic picks up everything. Like you can tell, it's picking up my dog panning, sitting six feet away. Man, I don't know guys, both bows are absolute shooters. Love these things. Anyway guys, I believe that is it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please remember to hit that subscribe button, give this video a like, head over to whitetailfit.com slash shop, get yourself a hat, get yourself a t-shirt, maybe some arrow wraps, maybe some veins, whatever it is, anything you buy on the website will go directly to helping support this channel and keep these videos rolling. Appreciate you guys, thank you for watching, we'll catch you on the next one, peace.